Hi, this is Christina Dubois Nugent coming to you with another part of our series of learning more about how to use the software. So when I look at the option chain, option data tables as it's also known as, and I change it to Home Depot, and I'm only looking at the particular month that I'm interested in trading, and again you don't have to do that, but um, that's one of the things that I like to just zero in and focus in on that particular piece. And I often look at percent to double, which allows me the ability to find the option that doubles the fastest, whether they're calls, remember on the left hand side, or puts on the right hand side, which often is the closest to at the money or slightly in the money um, option that's one thing to take a look at it which basically says that this particular option will g should go from a 99 cent value to a dollar 98 cent value as long as the stock moves 2.34 percent so when you're looking at the underlying stock and you're saying okay the stock is trading at in this example 114 30 and it needs to move 2.34 percent. Oops, I did that wrong. Let's do that again. All right. If I'm looking at 114.3 times 1.0234, the stock would need to move to roughly $17 in order for that option to double in value. Okay, so that's one way and one view that you can take a look at because it helps you drive the most efficiencies of underlying stock movement. How much money can I make? Most money I can make on least amount of stock movement. Now another view is all Greeks. Now by default whether you're looking at percent to double or verticals in Greeks, you are always going to see delta. And delta is going to be a slightly different color. I know it's a little harder to see right now. But basically what you're looking at is the ability to see that um, the delta here, and I'm going to go ahead and blow this up just a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. So let's see if I can just blow it up a little bit higher, uh, bigger here. Okay, it doesn't seem to want to respond to that. So let's see, here we go little slow but there it is is you're seeing that um, and I'm gonna do my best to be able to show the stock price as well as the headings here but the green color here is your Delta and Delta has diff different uh, definitions de different uses but Delta basically tells you how much that particular strike will move all things held equal as far as time, value, and volatility, but how much that underlying, uh, uh, what that particular strike will behave in relations to stock movement. So if the stock moves up from 114.30 to 115.30, a $1 move, you would expect the 114 call to move at 53.66% of that $1 move. Then as you get cl uh, more in the money, it's going to act more and more like the underlying stock. Where And what is shown here, the 103 call, which technically has $11 of real value, it's going to act 93% like the underlying stock. So that's what you're seeing here. Um, that's the delta. Now notice that the further you get away from uh, real value. So the real value stops at 114. All these are out of the money. They're just extrinsic value. And notice how much less those options will react like the underlying stock as much as the 125 call. If the underlying stock goes up a dollar, the underlying option, if you will, will move just 1%. Now, you know, it's relative because you're saying, uh, uh, you know, two cents. But at the end of the day, very, very small movement. Something easier to understand would be the 116 call that's currently trading at 62 cents. Everything else staying the same, what you're looking at is a $1 move on the underlying stock will show a 30 a cent move. So this would go to be roughly 92 cents, if you will for the delta. 
Now looking at the other Greeks, let's look at gamma, vega, theta. Now gamma is basically the delta accelerator. How quick will a one dollar, the next dollar stock move affect the delta? I'm going to get back to that. Gamma, just remember, is the delta accelerator. Vega is the volatility relationship. How much will the underlying option change based on a change in volatility? And then lastly, theta, which is probably the easiest to understand, which is what's the impact of time decay? And I'm going to stop this series on the theta by first pointing out that of all the Greeks, notice that theta is the only one that comes up as a negative. And because every day we're in the option, time is running out. This particular option is just a 10-day option, if you recall. That's the one we were looking at, just 10 days of options. So it's going to accelerate. The speed of acceleration is going to increase as time goes by. And as you can see, though the number seems like a small number, 0, 0.0 something, what I want you to notice is where is the number actually the largest. So as you scroll down, and remember this is your negative theta column, where is the number the largest? So it goes from 0 0.04s to 0 0.05s to 0 0.06s, then da back down to 0 0.05s, 0 0.04s, 0 0.03s. So where is it the largest? And it's going to be right at the money. And at the money, what you're seeing is, and it's basically a reinforcement that theta impact is greatest at the money. Therefore, when you sell near at the money options, you're taking the most advantage of time decay. If you buy at the money options, you're getting impact the, the most on time decay. And those are the subtleties that will make you be a, from a good trader to a great trader. And those are the things that we focus in on with butterflies and credit spreads is selling closer to at the money, higher theta, and then we're going to be, um, so we're selling closer to at the money and we are buying further um, as far as theta, further, less um, impacted theta, so a smaller theta value. So that's the conversation on delta and vega as we look at the option data change.